This is week three of Articulate's free e-learning course, an overview of e-learning authoring software. G'day, Paul from Democast Media, helping you supercharge your workflow with screen capture. So I'm gonna be talking about e-learning authoring software. And to begin with, I'm gonna tell you about the experience I had recently in getting a new car for our family. Our Subaru Outback was having serious issues with the head gasket and it became very obvious quickly that we had to replace it. It needed to be a reliable car that was going to last us a long time and uh, be free of any serious issues down the road. It had to fit within our budget, have plenty of uh, room in the boot and um, be uh, big enough to suit a growing family. So even though we were clear on that, we were overwhelmed with so many choices and options. We did put down a deposit for a Mazda CX-7 and because we, we loved the way it looked and the way it handled, but we checked out some more reviews around that and it has major issues uh, uh, electronically and mechanically. And so we, we jumped out of that and we ended up with a Ford Mondeo wagon instead, which was just what we were looking for. Uh, you could be tempted with something else that looks great, uh, but it may not fit your actual needs. And this is, can be the same issue that we find when choosing different e-learning authoring software. There's plenty of um, models <laughs> available, different brands, different price points. Um, you may not necessarily have to get the most expensive thing and still be able to create great e-learning content. The software itself is designed to be able to grab text, audio, uh, videos, uh, animation, and can also include activities and quizzes to help manufacture a learning experience. I would classify e-learning software on a hierarchy, so on a pyramid, uh, the very top piece being your PowerPoint plugins, integrations that fit right into PowerPoint so you convert existing content and turn it into an interactive course. That's your most simplest form of e-learning authoring software. The next piece below that uh, has more features and that is your web application. This is the type of software where you can create content uh, wherever you are as long as you have uh, internet connection and this allows you to do more things and many modern software options let you create responsive content. And the last piece at the bottom is the most robust form of uh, authoring tool and that's your where, um, sorry, your desktop application. Uh, this is where you can have full customization. Uh, all of the quizzes and um, interactive options that you would want and uh, that is the way that I've cho chosen to go. One of the main considerations for choosing e-learning software is the kind of course you're creating. There are two types. In broad terms, you're either creating a linear course or a non-linear course or, or branching, branching scenario type of course. And the difference between the two is, is like the difference between reading a, a traditional storybook from start to finish. No matter what's going on in the story, you're always gonna come up with one ending. Uh, whereas if you're reading one of these uh, choose your own adventure stories, you have decision points throughout the journey where depending on which page you go to, you're gonna be presented with a new set of content and a different ending. And you have multiple different endings depending on the different decisions you made. And that is more like the non-linear approach to a course. And personally, with the kind of e-learning content that I like to create, it's the uh, software demonstration uh, screencasts. And that lends itself to a linear approach. And I've made a intentional decision to go with Camtasia. An article that was uh, presented within this week's lesson was called Nine Considerations for Choosing uh, E-Learning Software. I highly recommend it. I'll leave a link in the description below. Those nine considerations are really important. I won't go through all of them, just the ones that I think uh, are really, um, that really stood out to me personally. So point number two of their list of nine considerations, how easy is a software to use? If you're a newbie to this industry and you just wanna get your foot in the door, 
I would recommend something like Camtasia, especially if you're just making linear courses. It's very easy to use. It's got a very straightforward way of dragging and dropping uh, certain animations uh, and design aspects. Uh, very easily done, easy to edit. It works even if you're just looking to edit video, you can use Camtasia for that. Consideration number five, do you record software simulations? So Adobe uh, Captivate or Articulate Storyline, both of those do record the screen and will help you with the simulation. And of course, like I said, Camtasia can do that too. If you're just focusing on this, the screen capture side of things, then you could go even cheaper and do Screencast-O-Matic, which I've reviewed in the past, or Screencastify, which is just the Chrome extension. So there are plenty of ways to record the screen. It really comes down to, are you doing a linear course or a non-linear course? And also the price as well, because although you could, you could go and, and get yourself a Captivate or Storyline, they are at the premium end and you may not have to go down that route. So consider those two things, the, the price and whether you're doing a linear or non-linear course. Okay, consideration number six, can you create mobile friendly courses? So although a lot of companies are really lagging behind when it comes to creating content for devices, I think it would still be a good idea to future proof yourself by having that option. Main thing is, does the software publish in HTML5? And do you have responsive course design? So when you publish, the course will automatically fit within any screen dimensions. Consideration number seven, do you need to integrate with an LMS or other application? So here, uh, you just need to see if the software can publish to SCORM or TinCan API. That, that will be particularly relevant if you're wanting to put your course on, on an LMS and track learner activity. Consideration number nine and the last one I'll talk about is, is there a community support available? And you're gonna have to turn to the community at some point when you hit an obstacle trying to make something. And I know I've had that experience. Uh, Camtasia has their support network, their community, and I've had questions answered and it's been very helpful. But the one that I find that's even better is Articulate's eLearning Heroes community. It is amazing. So make sure to sign up for their email list. Their blog posts are of high quality, great examples, very practical. Uh, not only that, they regularly give their readers um, freebies and uh, lots of great templates that you can use immediately for your projects. And they have this thing where uh, there is a weekly challenge that's put out there and you can create something and get feedback from seasoned professionals. That and many more things in that community makes it really top notch. So my question to you, what authoring software do you use and why? Leave your feedback in the section below. Remember, I'm here to rid the workplace of stress and confusion one screen capture at a time. If you want to be a better communicator, trainer or knowledge manager, make sure to subscribe to this channel to get more videos just like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.